Traditional mixed orchards are a paradise for flora and fauna. In spring, these species-rich orchards are at their most beautiful. With the first warm rays of the sun, things start to get lively and loud. The traditional mixed orchard is home to a multitude of species of birds. The starling sets up a strident call for a partner. The green woodpecker is the carpenter of the fields. Rotten wood is ideal for creating hollows. After a successful courtship, the starling now needs a home. But this one is already occupied. The great tit, on the other hand, has already found his. The nuthatch is also busy nest building. He needs damp mud to renovate his new home before they can move in. He's chosen an old woodpecker hollow for his hatchery, but the entrance is still too big. A customized solution to an avian problem. Almost everyone finds a nesting place in the orchard. That's also why orchards are so important for birds. Time for the squirrel to get some fresh food. Buds are rich in protein and very nourishing. When the cherry blossoms begin to unfold, spring has arrived. Whether cherry, mirabelle plum, apples or pears, the abundant blossoms promise a rich harvest. The blue tit isn't interested in nectar. It's after the larvae of the winter moth, a pest that develops in the calyxes of unfolding blossoms. For bees, this is peak harvest time. The rest of the year will never see so much pollen and nectar together. The first collared flycatchers return from their winter quarters in Africa only in May. These late arrivals have no time to lose. The male starts his courtship display straight away. Once he's attracted one of the rather nondescript females, she immediately sets about building their nest. This late in the season, most of the best nesting spots are already taken. This pair was lucky, or they might just have evicted the previous tenants. The collared flycatcher is not oversensitive about things like that. Orchards are the ideal habitat for collared flycatchers. Lots of nesting places and plenty of insects. The rough bark on older trees is an ideal aid for furry animals to scratch off their winter coats. Foxes and hares are also frequent visitors. In the shelter of the fruit trees, they find cover and food. The luxuriant fruit tree blossoms only last a few weeks. 
If the weather was good and the bees industrious enough, fruit will now slowly be developing. Under the trees, things continue to bloom. Dandelions and buttercups thrive especially well in fertilized fields. Barren soil produces a greater variety of plants. Amid the dense grass forest, ants and aphids coexist in a harmonious symbiosis. The aphids feed on the plant juices, which have a high sugar content but little valuable protein. They excrete the excess sugar in liquid form. Ants love this so-called honeydew. In exchange, they protect their aphid herd from predators. Ladybirds are a nightmare come to life for an aphid colony. A single ladybird can consume up to 50 aphids a day. Unless it's discovered by the ants first, that is, and chased away. Several bird species now have offspring they have to feed. For the spotted woodpecker's young, cockchafers are a delicious treat. But for baby nuthatches, the big insects are too big to cope with. So to turn it into baby food, the nuthatch parent has to give the bug a pounding. Try again. No, it still won't fit. A bit more crushing. There we go. Perfect. In the meadow below, it's become noisy. Male grasshoppers announce their readiness to mate. The dense grass in the field is home to many different kinds of grasshopper, so it's not that easy to find the right partner. The search is dangerous too. Wasp spiders spin their webs between the blades of grass. Their favorite food? Grasshoppers. This jump can have a fatal ending. This noise heralds danger for all field dwellers. The season's first mowing has begun. The fragrant grass makes excellent livestock feed. For the field dwellers, it means they must run for cover. After 20 days in the increasingly cramped breeding hollow, the nuthatch brood are ready to leave their dark cave.
their parents will continue to feed them for a few days outside the nest. A good thing, too, as they haven't quite got the knack of climbing about the tree yet. But with a bit of practice, the young nuthatches will soon be able to hunt their own insects and caterpillars. The green woodpecker's diet consists almost exclusively of ants. When the fields are mown, it has a much easier job of finding their nests on the ground. Overhead, the birds of prey are on patrol. He can scold all he likes, but to little avail. He just has to keep a wary eye out as he works, so that nothing can attack him unnoticed from above. He hollowed out his breeding spot in an old cherry tree. Like all chicks, his young are also insatiable. They need a constant supply of ant mush. In early June, summer arrives in the orchard. The fruit trees are lush and green. Cherries are the first fruit to ripen. Sweet and delicious they may be, but they're tricky to harvest. It takes a lot of time and effort to get these delicate fruits off the trees. Each individual cherry must be carefully hand-picked. The culinary competition begins. All the animals, especially birds, love sweet, fresh tidbits just as much as humans do. Perhaps the woodpecker is serving dessert. Cherries are also a great favorite with insects. The cherry fruit fly breeds rapidly in summer and can quickly infest whole areas. They have some rather peculiar looking mating rituals. Most years there's more than enough fruit for everyone on the trees. Even for the mice on the ground, there's plenty of windfall fruit. But, as is often the case, danger comes from above. The cherry fruit fly's eggs develop within a few days into larvae. Inside the fruit, they're well protected and can gorge to their heart's content. The mouse quickly recovers from its scare. The scent of the cherries is too tempting. It doesn't mind the maggots inside the fruit. On the contrary, a cherry fruit fly larva would be a welcome addition to its menu. In 
damp spots at the field's edge, the purple loose strife blooms in high summer. For butterflies such as the red admiral and the meadow brown, it's an important source of nectar. As are the white flowers of the yarrow that now have many insect visitors. The swallowtail is unquestionably one of the most beautiful of all butterflies. It feasts on its favorite red clover blossoms. Now, all the grasses are in bloom with many species ripening almost simultaneously. For the native animal and plant world, traditional mixed orchards are invaluable. Their preservation and upkeep should be everyone's concern. Gradually, autumn begins to approach the traditional orchard, and the circle of life in nature turns once again. <laughs> <laughs>